Good evening and welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. Tonight I'm putting together kits for our social fly tying monthly event with the Rocky Mountain Fly Casters Trout Unlimited in Fort Collins, Colorado, Northern Colorado. The pattern I've chosen for this week is or this month, excuse me, is a golden stonefly. Uh, these are among the first effective patterns for us up here. And this is based on something called an evil weevil. If you want to look that one up, it's a neat little attractor pattern out of Cody, Wyoming, I think. But I've adapted this one for a stonefly. I've got a scud hook. This is a size 6. That sounds huge, but the overall length is going to be a lot like a size 10 or a 12, a good overall size. The bead is 5 30 seconds, gold here, copper works as well. And I'm going to put some O2 lead wire since this thing kind of rattles around and it's going to want to slide back over your fly. We'll do something to secure it. I'm going to do a dozen wraps. Now once I fold that last little stub around, that makes about 13. The key is it's going to be the same every time, so your sixth fly should have the same proportions as your first, because this is going to serve as an index point for us. I'm going to build a little bit of a thread dam right up against the lead. I'm using brown thread, 140 denier. Let's me pull a little bit harder in a few spots. And this brown will show through the yellow vinyl abdomen material and give it a good mottled look. These stoneflies are yellow when they hat when they molt and then they get dark as they mature until they molt again. So combination of brown and yellow makes a golden stone. Now, got a little bit of dubbing, tiny amount. It's yellowish. This is kind of a dull yellow. You can use any yellow you want. Life Cycle uh, by Wopsy makes some good ones. This is a UV Caddis Nymph dubbing, but the color is called Golden Stone. This one's a little harder to find, but the Wopsy Life Cycle Golden Stone's a good one. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a ball back here to help spread out the tail. Tail is going to be a stripped goose biot. And if you have a whole one to work with, you're going to want to use the ones out towards the tip for the tail. They're a little skinnier and just seem to fit better on the hook. Now I'm going to get those tips even and they're both curved the same way. And I'm just going to kind of lay them against the thread and slowly go over until I got both of them tied in. Now, I'll admit that's going to take a lot of practice. So if you have trouble with it, just tie them in one at a time. It doesn't take that much longer. Now I've moved my thread up to the lead. That's my index point. My abdomen material is going to be D-rib. This is a vinyl rib. It's D and cross section, so it's flat on one side and rounded on the other. When it first comes off the spool, it's going to be all curled up, so just stroke it between your fingers a few times. That'll warm it up and make it softer and easier to work with. Now I'm going to butt that one up right against the lead and tie it in here along my side. And bring the thread back to the biots. And then get the thread out of the way, back up to the index. Now when this comes over, it should be round side out. You accomplish that by tying the flat side against the hook when you lash it in in the first place. Six turns and you'll be right up against the lead. Looking good so far. Now for a shell back for the wing covers, 
I'm going to use thin skin. This is a vinyl sheet. I've cut it to this width and you want it to be about the same width as the bead. What I'm going to do is tie this in with a slow loop so that it cups its way around the hook and then just start working back. And when I get to the D rib, I'm actually going to jump up just a little bit and get it behind that last wrap of D-rib. So now that's putting my hinge right in the middle. It gives me plenty of room to, to uh, dub and, and tie in the, the legs. Let's start off with just a little bit of dubbing. And by a little bit I mean a little bit. All we're doing is we're building a little bit of a ramp to help those legs stand out and keep them out of the way of your wing case when it folds over. Go back to your same goose spyot. And this time they can come off of any any part of the biot. The wide ones look just fine. Now I'll tie the one in on the far side first so you can kind of see how I size it. I want that thing to be a little bit longer than the body length, curved out. I'll just pinch that in place and tie it in. Now with the other biot I'll do it on the near side and I'll just eyeball it so that it's the same length. Take the thread right up against the dubbing. Now a little more dubbing. We're going to do this you know, four times. Just a little bit each time. Now uh, you see that gap on top? That's not going to matter when I pull the wing case over. You want it to be nice and smooth on the bottom without any gaps. So now I'm going to pull the D-rib over and tie it down and I'm going to make a few ribs, wraps forward and then come back so that when I fold it I can jump right up onto the D-rib and here's my new hinge. Let's go ahead and trim these so that they're shorter than the bead. Back to the dubbing. small amount of dubbing. It doesn't take much because we built that up with the thin skin. Again you look on the bottom and it's nice and continuous. And we've got a ramp for our front legs. Now I'm going to set these up so that they're a little shorter than the rear legs. Again, you want them curving out. Looking good. Now I'm going to fold those stubs back and make a couple of wraps. So now it'll be easier to trim these things because any stubs you leave, you'll be covering up with dubbing. Speaking of dubbing, one last time. The place to check is on the bottom. If that one's smooth, you're good. Fold your thin skin over and tie it in right behind the bead. Only make a couple of turns. And then fold the thin skin out of the way. And you're ready for a whip finish.
I'm cut that thin skin as close as you can. It's always going to leave a little bit of a stub, but that's okay. So there you go, it. Evil Weevil Stonefly, Golden Stone.